Well, what's up everyone, this is Matt Morozik, and this will be the first video on this Magneto prototype I've been working on the past uh, week or so. I haven't done any work in progress videos on this because, quite frankly, this has been a challenging piece just to get together. This is the very first time I've actually had it together since I've had this. I got it a couple weeks ago um, when I was in the middle of all the other stuff, so I'm just now getting to it. I sent the client a couple photos last night showing him that I was working on it, and he's like, thanks for the update. So, um... This is a pretty cool piece. It's been really challenging. Um, it's very, um, it's cool, but getting it together was a challenge. Um, it, as you can see, it's a Magneto. He's floating. And what it looks like he's, what he's done, he's like, looks like, a, to me, like, like a jet engine. Um, I'll come in and look, show you closer. There's like a, there's a fan down on the bottom that he's kind of standing on top of. But the way this goes together is very, very tricky. Um, and it kind of came partially assembled. Um, so it's got like um, these clear pieces, which um, were a challenge to get to fit on correctly. I'm gonna just take them off here for a second. Um, I'm not gonna glue these on. Um, and I had I, I played with the idea of trying to get this thing to come apart more, and it does. But I'm not gonna take it all the way apart. Uh, I'm just gonna show you kind of this and kind of explain what I've been working on. Um, and this piece back here. It's got these clear kind of pieces that kind of represent like energy and stuff from the, him ripping this thing apart. So when I got it, it came in two boxes, the cape and I think part of Magneto was one box and then the base and other parts of Magneto were in the other box. This probably won't be able to go back in the original box because when I got it, um, several of these parts right here that are sticking out were come off. I had to attach them. And the bottom of the base is very thin. It's only about maybe half an inch thick. So the client had sent me some photos of it from the factory and it had been put together. And what they did is they glued it together at the factory and then they took it up, they kind of unglued it or broke it <laughs> and to get it apart to send it to me. So my theory is that when these ship, that the base will be one piece because there's no way with the, the way this is designed to key these pieces in around this edge. There isn't enough thickness. And I thought about adding a wood base at the bottom about an inch thick or so so I could add magnets and all that stuff but then I figured you know what that's not representative of what, of what people are going to get I don't want to show that so what I did I decided to glue on all these little things on the outside and I'll have to figure out how to repackage it later so so that's that was the most challenging part I did have some other pieces that were broken um, this piece back here had broken and a few pieces I had to glue that back together um, just really really challenging just to get it together and i think just, it's, it's a prototype so when you get when you get this whoever has this it won't be you won't have as much issues i will because you're not getting a prototype slash kit so um surprisingly the cape is very light and it doesn't pull magneto back um, i did have to one of the things i had to do is because the cape was leaning back and i was getting a big gap around the the front here so you can't see it in the camera i'll spin them around a little bit here I just went in, the first thing I did on this guy is I went in and I kind of did my uh, petroleum jelly trick that I use a lot when I'm rekeying things. And you really can't see it, they'll blend in um, when it's all done. But um, the first thing I did on this guy is before he, actually, no, it was the second thing I did. The first thing I did was get the legs, I glued the legs in and I went and glued the torso to the waist. You can kind of see where it's shining, where my epoxy oozed out. Uh, to kind of get those fitted. Once I could get them kind of standing on this thing, then I fitted the cape. And what I did is I, uh, uh, I slathered the whole top of the torso with petroleum jelly, and then I put the then I put a, a nice big thick bead of Aves uh, two part epoxy uh, just underneath the cape here, and I basically created a wedge to force the cape to to tilt forward back, and that seemed to do the trick. Um, I'm gonna do a little more sanding and smoothing of that bead, but once it's all primed in paint, you're not gonna see it. Um, but it makes it fit much better. So that's kind of what I did there to get the cape to fit. Um, hindsight being 2020, what I probably could have done is, and I wasn't sure, I, I, I didn't do it because I was worried about breaking the cape, but um, I could have probably, because there's two, there's two keys and magnets, and the magnets are nice and strong. I wish the keys were a little deeper, but there's not a lot of meat here between the arms and stuff. And the arms come off those, um, they came with magnets in the arm, but I added magnets up in the up in the uh, armpit. 
Now this side, when I got it, fit really, really good. I didn't have to do any work to that. I just added the magnet, fits, and it's a really nice fit. The other side, not so much. Um, it was pretty loose and there's a, there's a gap around it. So I did my re-keying chick trick again. I'm not sure if you can see it. The blue stuff, that's the putty. So again, I slathered this in petroleum jelly. Add, well, first I put the magnet in, made sure it was in the right, the right spot. Slathered this in petroleum jelly, filled that in with my, my putty. Stuck the arm in, let it all ooze out, and then clean it up, and now it fits, and there's no um, wiggle or, or gap. Um, the arms, will, the, the hands come off, they'll get glued on eventually. Um, uh, so there's that. Uh, if I tilt down, you can kind of see here what the base looks like. So it's like a jet engine or a fan that he's kind of ripped apart with his magnetic powers. Um, these blades are really fragile. Uh, one was broken off when I got it. And I've managed to break two more off and handling it, so I gotta glue those back on and fix it. Um, so again, once you get this, you shouldn't have to worry about that. Because the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna glue the entire base together except for the clear parts. So the base will be one piece. Um, the clear parts will be put on later. Uh, Magneto, with the exception of the arms, will be a one piece. Um, so yeah, uh, packing will be tricky. So just rip this thing apart. There's pipes and stuff going everywhere. Um, this will be really nice with a bunch of metallics and stuff on it. Um, and then I'll put the clear pieces back on because it's a cool effect. Let's see. Um, and I had to do some um, heating and bending um, with the hair dryer to get these to fit in. To get the, the pipes and stuff to wrap around the pieces. Like um, this one in particular right here. I had to heat up these pipes. Put this in, piece in place and kind of bend it and wrap it around so it fit in there. Um, this piece right here is the more, the more challenging piece because it actually expands between two of these things that stick out. So once I got this, um, I call it an arm, it's not an arm, this part of the base epoxied in, I then kind of got this part dry fitted, added this in, clamped it on. So I clamped this into place with an A clamp. And then I got this kind of, I got this kind of where I had to go. And with the hair dryer, I got everything lined up. And now this will snap in. I may have to go back with this hair dryer a little bit more. Keeps wanting to bounce back a little bit. But it fits pretty good now. Let's see. So that key's in there and that key's in over there. Uh, before it didn't line up at all. So that took me quite a while to get that to fit. Um, and then these other two pieces, I wish, oh, there's one more that fits on really good. It's got a nice key. This guy's got a really nice key. It's in right there. And these last two, I wish the keys were a little bit bigger. Um, I actually broke one and had to fix it and trying to get these on, not trying to get them on. Oops. Just putting them on, one fell and it broke. And it's not that big of a deal because it's a little, you can't tell where it broke after I fixed it. I actually re-keyed this one. You can see some putty there. Again, I had slathered this with petroleum jelly, put Bondo on there. Clamped it down there, let it dry, and now it fits really good. This is the one that fell off and broke because it was so loose. <clears throat> and then we got this one here that fits the same way. Um, the way that well, the keys, where the keys are, they're right here by these tips. So I don't know how they would make them bigger or deeper. Um, they'd have to kind of reposition them. So it fits. I may rekey that one too so it's a little tighter because it's kind of making me nervous um, right now. Um, I'm actually going to put a little blue tack on it just to be safe. Um, So it doesn't break off. So this this piece has had quite a bit of prep work on it so far to get it just together. Um, so my goal today was to get it together. <laughs> uh, past three nights I've worked on it and I put some good time on it today. Um, so let's see. Oh, he's got three portraits. One's really not a portrait, so we'll look at this. We'll, um, I do like this. I mean, that's my first Magneto. I think it's pretty cool. Um, so the first one is this helmeted kind of portrait with the no face kind of thing. So that comes off. Nice strong magnet in the neck. The next one is I'm calling it kind of his pretty boy look. And if you're wondering what, why is there a hole in his head, they um, casted this part of his hair separately. Just like that. And the reason they did that is because it got all these little tendrils sticking off of it and that would have been hard to cast in one piece. 
So um, that'll glue in and I'll putty that in. I could probably do that tonight. So that's pretty cool. And then the last one is a helmeted light up portrait. And this is interesting because the client called me. He's like, hey, is it okay if they cast the head and clear? He's like, yeah, I don't care um, because the eyes light up. And the way this works is, so the whole head, and this has, actually has a separate neck. It's interesting. So this part goes into the, into the, the neck of the body like that. And then this slips on top like that. And the fit's perfect. Uh, he's got some teeth that are over here. And then the switch is right here on the top. Let me turn it on. Now his whole head's going to light up because it hasn't been painted yet, so it's going to look a little funky. Um, so his forehead's lighting up, and then the helmet goes on. So once you paint everything, um, just his eyes will light up. But that's pretty cool. Um, I'm digging it. So those are the three portraits you get. It's interesting design, the way they did this with the separate neck and everything. It's actually pretty clever. Um, it is a little tricky with the teeth to make sure that the teeth fit in there correctly and then he slides over the neck so that would be a little fitting and stuff because I played with it a little bit when I first got it. Uh, so I'm going to put the pretty boy portrait. I'll just put this portrait back in because of this. So he's got that and he's got two helmets. The helmets are exactly the same. Uh, let's see what else. That kind of goes over what he looks like. Like I said, I didn't do any work in progress of, of building this thing because it was just a lot of trial and error. And I just wanted to get some work done on it. So I didn't do any um, work in progresses. So I've got on my bench in a spot where I can actually spin it around with the cape. The cape shouldn't hit anything. Get some measurements on it. All right, so height wise, I'm going to go to the top of the cape because that's the highest point. So the back of the cape is. And it's on a turntable, so 26 and a half inches tall. The depth would be from the back of the cape to the front. I have to guess on this. You're looking at about 28 inches deep, so it's got some depth to it. And then your width wise would be basically the width of the cape is the widest point, it looks like. You're about 20, 27 there, so it's pretty square. 26 and a half tall, 28 deep, 27 wide or so. So pretty much a square shape overall. Um, pretty cool piece. Um, again, it's my first Magneto I'm doing. So I have to play with colors to get that down. Um, yeah, so when I ship this thing, um, I'll probably, shipping the base will be the toughest. Um, so I take Magneto off and take the clear pieces off. You got all these little arms that are sticking out. So I'll probably like put a pillow in the middle of it or something. Um, you know, go buy some cheap pillows, fill the basin with pillows, and then wrap it in bubble wrap. To try to get there in one piece. Um, the renders look really good, so hopefully I can kind of use the renders as my color reference. I do have one little bit of damage on Magneto I've got to fix. I'm not sure if I did it or if it came that way as a chip out right here in the boot. It's not that big of a deal. I tend to, I tend to cause a lot of damage when we're working on stuff, and I don't see it till later. Um, just because I got, you know, my desk was a wreck here. It's about 20 minutes ago. I just cleaned it up so I could kind of do this little intro video. Um, so he's been pretty much fitted. I got a, uh, I've got a little bit of seam, a little gapping to do in here on, on the legs. I'll get a little bit of A's or something, just kind of fill in those gaps. Uh, so it's a prototype, and the, the prep was very minimal. <laughs> Um, some a lot of fitting issues I had to deal with, um, but again, it's a kit and uh, it's a prototype, so I kind of expect that. It's a nice surprise when I get a prototype and it's almost ready for paint. So that's so you know, and each factory is different. So um, and Magneto is very stable up here. It's surprising how stable he is because he doesn't look like he should be as stable as he is. Because um, really, there's um, what well, the way this works is there's a uh, a nice size peg that comes out of this up into his foot and there's a magnet right here now what's interesting and this could be just because the way the legs fit or whatever when i first when i first put them on the base this foot was sticking up quite a ways but after a while it kind of it kind of settled down and fell into it so 
Don't be surprised if you get one of these later and you put them in and there's a little gap in the foot. Let it sit for a little while and it'll kind of settle down and get into its spot. Because um, it's very, the way this is engineered, it's just kind of, there's a lot of pieces that have to line up just right for them to, to fit. And I think once you get it on there with the weight, it just kind of falls into place. So um, I was a little worried at first because I was like, man, I can't do anything with the legs. Those are fit. And there's a big piece of resin here with a pin in it. So I was my next thing I was going to do, I was going to try to build this up and make it work. But it, I, I put it on there and about, I came back a few minutes later and he'd settled down and he fits perfectly. So nice surprise there. But uh, yeah, so um, that's all I'm going to do tonight. I got them together. That's a big step. <laughs> uh, the past three nights working on getting them fitted. I'm going to, what I may do is... Um, I'll show you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it real quick since I've got this rolling. I made a clamp. Got this one little spot here where it keeps wanting to pop out. Because uh, of the, an alignment thing. So I'm going to get this clamp to back up and add some heat to it. It's like this this part wants to t needs to twist a little bit. But I want to get it in under tension before I do it. So I'm going to do that. So now I got that clamped into that key. I'm going to add some heat to it. And this will, this will release the tension. And I'm just going to let it sit overnight like this. So I've only been like letting it sit for a few minutes and it may not be enough to let it retain the memory of where it needs to be, make it happy. But this resin softens up pretty quickly. Um, so the factory didn't do a very good job of taking this apart once they sent it, after they took it apart. There was a lot of chip out and stuff I had to fix. So they kind of super glued it together, took a picture, then ripped it apart and sent it to me. Um, so there was some, some work that had to be done there. Once it's all together, it looks okay, but uh, if I was to take this apart, you'd see some of my really kind of sloppy gluing down the bottom here. But once it's all together, you don't see it, so I'm not worried about it. Alright, so I just had some heat and I could feel it release. And this, this pipe is really plowable right now. I, could, I can bend it around pretty good. So, and this one right here has got actually little, mold, little molds or little cuts where it hits that little kind of wave thing. So, uh, there you go. Um, I'm not going to mention the producer because I'm not sure if I'm allowed to. Um, I don't even know the sculptor to be honest. Um, but I actually have a second one of these. And so they sent me two. One was to paint for the prototype and one is, is mine. Um, am I going to do both at the same time? Probably not. Um, just because I, I don't have time to. <laughs> I would love to. Then I could sell a second prototype. But um, maybe I'll sell the kit or I'll paint it up and sell it later. But uh, there you go, intro video to this uh, custom quarter scale Magneto prototype. Um, the next step will to be go through and just kind of go through and see any areas that need additional fixing or repair, um, the little gaps in the legs, and then I'll give him a really good bath and I'll throw a coat, coat of primer on it and see where he is after that. Um, and then we'll start painting hopefully uh, this week sometime. But as always, thanks for watching. This is Matt Mrozik. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye.